Hello friends, welcome to the session on 8051-bit manipulation instruction. In this session, we will see what we mean by bit manipulation instruction for the microcontroller unit 8051 and how we can make the use of different instructions that are available with 8051 for the bit manipulation and also how we can make the use of these instructions in the assembly language programs. Friends, as you know that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel and do subscribe to the channel so that you can observe, you can watch many other educational videos by sitting at your home only. So let us start the session with the question what we mean by bit manipulation instructions for the microcontroller unit 8051. We know that the microcontroller unit 8051 has a lot many instructions and these instructions are being classified into different categories such as data transfer instruction, arithmetic instructions, logical instruction, branching instruction, subroutine instruction and the last class of the category is the bit manipulation instruction. So in this session, we are going to discuss what we mean by bit manipulation instructions for the microcontroller unit 8051. It is possible that by using the microcontroller, you can deal with the bits rather than the bytes. And it is possible that you can perform the bit operation. That is, you can set the bit, you can clear the bit, or you can make other manipulations that are available with the microcontroller unit. So it is a kind of a flexibility that is being provided by the microcontroller unit so that the designer can optimize the resources. And it is possible that we can reduce the unnecessary overhead. 8051 microcontroller also supports the single bit operation. That is the internal RAM of 8051 which contains 128 addressable bits. That is from 20H to 2FH, we can make an access to the bits and we can manipulate these bits of the random access memory of 8051. Also, we have special function resistors and these resistor supports 128 addressable bits. Also, there are I.O. ports and each I.O. port line is also can be performed a bit operation. That is, each I.O. line can be treated as a separate single bit port. So it is possible that you can manipulate each I.O. line and also you can manipulate the SFR resistors. 8051 will provide the bit manipulation instructions. And by using these bit manipulation instructions, we can perform various operations such as AND operation, logical AND operation, logical OR operation. We can perform uh, the operation such as SET, means we can set the bit to one or we can clear, that is we can uh, reset the bit or we can complement the bit also. It is also possible that you can jump, you can branch the instruction and this branching will depend upon the bit value. So bit manipulation, you can say, is an act of algorithmically manipulating the bits or other pieces of the data and that data which is shorter than the byte or which is shorter than a word. So whenever you want to do such kind of things, then it is possible that you can make the use of the bit manipulation instructions for the microcontroller unit 8051. So before we actually start discussion of the different instructions, let us understand the bit address of the internal RAM for the microcontroller unit 8051. The bit addressable area of the RAM is just 16 bytes of the internal RAM and that is being located from uh, 20 hexadecimal to 2F hexadecimal. This is where the individual memory bits in the internal RAM 
can be set or cleared. So this is the area, this is the address of memory, which can be manipulated by making the use of the bit manipulation instructions. So in total, there are 128 bits and these bits are being addressed from 00 to 7F. So bit values can be set to either zero or one, because we know that each individual bit can have a value of zero or one. So for example, when we uh, say that the bit of having the address 25H, then actually it means that the internal RAM of the location 24 and the bit number is five. So whenever uh, you make the use of the instruct, make the use of the address to 5H in the instruction, then actually what you are doing is that you are making an access to the address of 24 and the fifth bit. So when we say uh, 07, it means that the address is 20 and the seventh bit. So this uh, table you need to remember whenever you want to make the use of any bit manipulation instruction for the microcontroller unit 8051. So let us start the uh, different instructions. The first instruction is the AND logic C comma bit. And uh, so this instruction will AND logically AND the content of the carry flag with the Boolean value of the source bit or with the complemented Boolean value of the source bit. So for example, if you use this instruction such as ANL C comma bit, then the carry bit is logically ended with the source bit that is being mentioned in the instruction and the result will be stored in the carry bit. If you make the use of the instruction in this way, ANL C comma forward slash bit, then the content of the carry bit is logically ended with the complement of the bit and then the result will be stored in the carry bit. Another instruction is ORL C comma bit. This instruction will OR the content of the carry flag with the Boolean value of the source bit or with the complemented Boolean value of the source bit. If you write this instruction ORL C comma bit, then the carry bit is logically OR with the bit value given in the instruction and the result will be affected in the carry flag. If you write this instruction as ORL C comma forward slash bit, then the content of carry is logically ORed with the complement of bit value and the result will affect the carry flag. Another instruction is the CLR bit. So the indicated bit will be cleared by using this instruction. So if you uh, make the use of uh, this instruction such as CLR bit, then the concept bit will be made zero. If you use this instruction such as CLR P1 comma 2, P1.2, then the second bit from the port one will be cleared. If you use this instruction CLR C, then the carry flag will be cleared. Another instruction is uh, CPL bit, bit addressable uh, bit, the variable specified is complemented CPL. This is the complement logic. So the mentioned bit, which has bit one, it changed to zero. And if it is zero, then it will be made to one. So for example, if you write this instruction CPL bit, then the bit will be complemented. If we write this instruction CPL P1.5, then the fifth bit of the port one will be complemented. CPLC will complement the carry flag. There are uh, several jump instructions associated with the bit values. So it will check the condition of the bit. If the condition is being satisfied, then it will jump to the address indicated. Otherwise, execute the next instruction. Instruction increments the program counter by three and the branch address is computed by adding the signed displacement to the content of PC. 
So this already we have seen how the sign displacement is computed. The sign displacement can be either positive or negative, depending upon whether the jump is forward or reverse. So for example, we can write this instruction JB bit comma relative address. So jump if direct bit is set. So during this instruction, the content of the program counter will be incremented by three and then the relative address will be computed, which will be added into the PC if the value of the bit is equal to one. Another form of the instruction is J and B bit comma relative address. So jump if the direct bit is not set. So in this case, the program counter will be incremented by three. And if the bit value is zero, then the relative address will be computed and will be added into the program counter. Another form of this jump instruction is JBC bit comma relative address. Jump if direct bit is set and clear. So in this case, the program counter will be incremented by three. And if the bit value is one, then the displacement will be computed and then it will be added into the program counter and bit will be cleared. That is, it will be made to zero. Let us understand some simple programs where we can make the use of bit manipulation instructions. Suppose we want to write 8051 instructions to set the carry flag and to complement the most significant bit of the RAM address 20H. So in this case, we can clear the carry flag CLRC. Then we will complement the carry flag so that the carry flag is set to one. And then we will complement 07H. That is actually we are making an access of the register 20H. So we are complementing the most significant bit of the register 20H. So when you type these instructions by using any 8051 simulator, then, and when you execute them, that is when you run them, and if they are correctly typed, then you will get the result that your program status for PSW will be set to 80 and the location to zero will have a value 80H. So because of these instructions, the program status word will be changed to 80 and the location to zero will be set to 80 hexadecimal. Let us go for another example. Suppose we want to write 8051 instructions to complement MSB of the RAM address 22H. If the bit is one, we want to store FF H in 40, else we will store 00. So suppose we will load the number 00H to the register R3, then we will complement MSB of the register 22H by using this instruction CPL17H. Then jump if not bit. 17H comma loop one, and we will decrement R3, and this loop one will be the heading or will be the label of the instruction move 40 comma R3. That is, we will store the content of R3 in the location 40H. So when you type these instructions in the text editor window, of 8051 simulator and if they are correctly typed you can run them and once you run them then you can easily observe that our location for zero will be set to ff so the bit is one the msb of two two the bit is one and therefore the number ff hexadecimal will be stored in the location 40h after executing these instructions. So thank you friends for viewing the session. Hopefully you have understood what is bit manipulation instruction and how the bit manipulation instructions can be used in assembly language programs for 8051.
microcontroller unit thank you all for viewing the session